Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. So here is the scene. Here is the scene. Okay? The scene is... I think I'm the only one here at the at the SDPN studio. I'm gonna type it away, and I hear I do hear some footsteps upstairs, and I hear some talking, and I'm like, "Oh, Jesse must be here," and he's talking to somebody. I'm like, "Oh, Maddie must be here," because Steve's definitely not here. Yeah. Like, Steve's not for sure not here. Yeah. And, I might have been. And oh. and then anyway, I'm walking towards Jesse because he comes down to the main floor, and I'm saying hi to Jesse, and I'm telling him a story, and all of a sudden, bursting in a ball of Dragon Ball Z like <laughs> energy out of the basement, comes Steve Dagle. And he's like, it doesn't work. And we're like, what doesn't work? It doesn't, it must not work. This network, I'm leaving. <laughs> no. And, and Steve and I, or sorry, Jesse and I were like, what is it? And, he, and the coffee machine, it doesn't work. And so that was the big drama this morning. And did you guys find a solution? Because I, I do not know the answer Steve to this was question. was so mad. He was upset. I was mad. I needed my coffee and it wasn't working. So what happened? It didn't work. Did you get it working? No, no. No. Okay. So what what happens with me, Adam, is I have a grievance. Right. And then an adult has to check on the grievance. <laughs> and so Jesse, the adult, came downstairs. And what what did what did you find? What did you find with the coffee machine? Did it work? Well, first of all, no. You you tried a bunch of different outlets. Yes. Right. But the thing with trying the outlets is you have to try something else to know if it's actually the outlet or That's the coffee true. machine. Right. Because sometimes so, an outlet can go out or need to be reset or whatever. Exactly. So we tried the coffee machine. Didn't work in two outlets so i got something else i got the uh humidifier Mm -hmm. plugged that in the outlet it worked so we know it's now the coffee machine right so we so we look at the coffee machine we it has water in it should be fine you know we so does the humidifier uh and then the coffee machine doesn't work anymore oh so it just got it about uh three weeks wow month what company is it put them on blast i will not (laughs) i will not do that name names Oh, just, blast. It's just been a long time since I've seen Steve so freaked out about something. Oh, yeah. You were, yeah. The thing about Steve is that you do get upset. Like if someone messes with your food, you get upset. I, I get, you know, I have so much patience with people. But not for food. Not for things. It, it, not for it, things. Things, yeah, yeah. Things. Don't have any patience. Like technology? And you know what? what while, I'm, while I'm ranting and raving, I stunk yesterday because of you. For a, a video that oh we, we can't, we talk, can't about talk about that about yet oh, yeah, no, right. no no we got no, a video no. coming out next week you'll know what, what yeah, Steve's talking yeah, about no, we can't talk about that but yeah when you came up the stairs and Adam oh and, and another I, thing <laughs> it doesn't sound you. absolutely perfect in here yet <laughs> you were <laughs> why not so hot and bothered where are we at on Google get it on the Google where are we at on that <laughs> you were so hot and bothered um, I want to I want to do a quick quick shout out to the compliment section um, yeah. because uh, Jesse said. Uh, uh, first episode, he's like, "Listen, not everything's up and running." I think the studio was about like seventy percent. Oh, are not even that. We've no. already got we've got There's certain- an entire wall yeah. not there. Yeah. yeah, you guys, we don't have a floor yet. You yeah. can't see yeah. it, but the floor isn't installed. Right. So there's going to be some echo. I try to like preempt the comments, being like, "Give give give me like a couple weeks." No, let's, let's finish no. it up. This we have this great not- design no. company. They're called La France. They're awesome, and they've been helping helping us build this studio, and it's not done. Well, my favorite part about it was that people took that as a hey have you considered this and I, so yeah. the audio because i know some of the audio didn't work that great yeah, last episode no. and and uh, uh we've got a brand new mixing board and all yeah, that it stuff. wasn't it wasn't installed it wasn't yet, installed yet. <laughs> so I, just, I just was like well jesse's got his work I, I just honestly i woke up the next morning looked at the comments and i was like well jesse's got his work cut out for him oh not my, my problem and new cameras yeah 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 new new, cameras. Yeah, new cameras, cameras as of today cameras are installed but I haven't done a little finessing on like the tint and the color, so all that's coming in post. So okay. So the cameras aren't perfect. Is so that I'm why look I look like Paul Bearer? I'm gonna look pale. Yeah, as, a little overexposed. I'm gonna look pale as hell. Slam. Yeah. <laughs> Undertaker will take your soul. <laughs> I think. Oh. I think so. So just bear with us as we get up to speed. I know some people no. are mentioning the glare on the screen. We're gonna get a filter. Oh, no. for- oh is there glare? I didn't know. <laughs> oh I didn't shit. Know. <laughs> Jesse, look at this fucking bullshit. <laughs> Let's throw the whole building away. We need to throw the whole building we away. Th- we should throw the whole Jesse away. And He's you know what? I keep down, picking the he? mic up and taking it with me. I think I'm just going to... 
Oh, this won't do. This oh, won't do. Oh man. I don't, I don't think I don't think they should stop. Keep it coming. No, no, keep no. it coming. It was very funny. Keep it coming. Very, very funny. We, no, we are extremely fortunate to have people who care so much. Exactly. No, and that's yes, what that's exactly. what was so funny about it. It's it, But it's, if you would mind your business. <laughs> Nobody's commenting because they don't care. It's yeah. always appreciated. It just made me laugh. I just, um, I just hope, I hope you guys recognize that there's a reflection on the TV for There the is. Lights. There I is. Don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it will go away. We promise. It's, it will go away. Everyone's the same. But, We're yep. a small business here. Yeah. All right. Give us a freaking minute. Mrs. Dangle watched the first few minutes and just she would go quiet. Quiet. Oh, and then no. I'm like, all right, what is it this time? Oh, no. oh. Did you notice? Yes, we did. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, we noticed. <laughs> well, what about? Yes, we, we noticed that as well. <laughs> we're working on uh, tight timelines with Adam's move, and yeah, we're yeah, we're like 75 percent, and people we're in here. people were it's actually a retool. There were people <laughs> that were rebuild. confused. By the way, this is not my house. There are Some people, people that thought. Oh that? yeah, I got a bunch of DMs for people going. Well, oh, so you moved again? Oh, what? 18 months? You're gonna have to build another studio? And I was like, okay, that's a funny joke. I get it because they move all the time. I get it. But I also want to say that this is, we have our own HQ now. That's why the episode is called HQ. Yeah, sure. But like with how close your season seats are. Oh, to stop it. The ice. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this was in your house. Well, no, the actually what my house is actually the arena is in my house. This is how rich I am. <laughs> The arena is my house, and I live there. And that's the season seats comped. So I think uh, the weirdest thing about all of it is when Adam's sitting at ice level, he's still barefoot. <laughs> I'm not barefoot Stop right it. now, but I ordered. Yeah, he is. I, I, I ordered Crocs uh, because Jesse I have is trying to institute a no outside shoes rule. Yeah, I wear so my gonna, Crocs. So, on the so I'm going to be bringing my Crocs into the office, and um, I'm going to be barefooted again, and I'm thrilled about it. I love not no, wearing you're, socks. You're supposed to wear your socks. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I don't believe there's a rule about that. So, Steve, who's our HR? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but if they could show up immediately, <laughs> that'd be great. HR can't tell you to put on socks. Can CJ be HR? <laughs> yeah, sure. That, CJ's that not. Yeah. CJ's not going to make us put on socks. CJ's I way too late. So. He's, Hearing he's rumbling, vacation. You've been fired. <laughs> <laughs> he's vacation. CJ. He can't be like that. He's he's not wearing socks either. Come on. He just got uh, fresh off a yeah. another uh, like a beautiful vacation and then he was at the GM meetings. Come on now. Who on the network would be the per perfect HR? Maddie. Maddie probably. Maddie our yeah, producer. Yeah, Maddie our yeah. producer Hello. who does not get Ma Oh, so I've been holding something back. You asked a question, Maddie, did you give him the correct answer or did you lie to him? So we could surprise him with the with the oh, little thing. Yeah. So you you asked about a star wipe. Yeah, do we have a star we wipe? We have star wipe. Oh! Do we have star wipe? Star, star wipe. wipe. Let's go. Star wipe us star right wipe, now. Maddie. R T A. Yeah! <laughs> yes, that's sick. Oh man, that is that. That's hot. That's hot. Oh, we're, there it is again. Such a, is. We're real. Oh, we're a yeah. real show. We have star wipes. Start. Listen, you don't make it until you get star wipes. So here you are. <laughs> Adam just Let's got go. star wipes. I'm wipe. thrilled. I'm so. I've never been star wiped so much. I'm feeling. There's a lot of emotions I'm feeling right now. It's a good thing that my. Uh, Good thing that my sweater here is covering up my nips. Just throwing that out there. Also, it's exciting. Compliment time. section. Uh, I know it was a diamond wipe. It wasn't really a star wipe. Don't get technical. Oh, they will. Yeah. They'll get technical. <laughs> Don't you worry. Uh, hey. Jesse, do you want an A or an A plus? Get me a star wipe. Right. Do you, right, we'll okay, so here's... I wanna, do you guys remember the college admission scandal? Mm-hmm. Remember the uh, the what? woman from Full House? The celebrities? Yeah, yeah the celebrities. Yeah. And one of them from uh, Desperate Housewives was... They were paying basically to get their kids into like UCLA. And the way this worked was they would go through this intermediary guy and he would bribe members of various huge universities in the United States and say, this person... Uh, and he would get the coach of a program to write a letter saying, this person should have a scholarship at this school. Uh, and they should have admission. Um, and uh, uh, they're, they're an incredible athlete and they need to be here. So what they would do is they completely concoct a, a resume for kids. So like a, one word. of the things they would always do that nobody would question was like a paddling team, whether it's like, you know, kayaking or that sort of thing, because who's going to question that? You're going to go look up kayaking highlights on the internet. You can, I you, would, you can find out quickly with basketball and hockey and football and that sort of thing. You, there's scouting reports, but no one's going in like, wow, well, where is there kayak DB? Like that doesn't exist. <laughs> right? So they were able to kind of make this happen. And you're talking about basically taking the money out of the university right scholarship which means you're completely paid for which means somebody who deserves a scholarship doesn't get it and then 
this intermediary and the coach at the university would get kickbacks of, you know, in excess of fifty to a hundred thousand dollars per student. And and it was a groundbreaking case because no one had scammed their way into university before. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Hadn't even conceived of it. No. Uh, but I thought that that story relates very interestingly to this one from Rick Westhead. Are you ready? Adam put his like arm on, he put his hand on my chest. He's like, don't open Twitter. Something yeah. just happened. You can't open Twitter. This story is crazy. OHL commissioner David Branch confirms the league hired an investigator to probe allegations that several hockey parents paid for their sons to be selected in the 2022 OHL draft. Whoa. Okay. Three GTHL coaches have been told I have told Rick Westhead that they have evidence via text message of parents paying in excess of $30,000. Here's David Branch's wow. statement. $30,000? To get drafted the, in the O. The TikTok sound? I'm sorry. It was, that, oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, yeah. Oh, that is literally the TikTok sound. Oh, my God, sound. that. It took me a minute. I'm I, was, said, I was like, yeah, are you perplexed by that number? Yeah, or? <laughs> no. I, the thing I saw on the internet. I David Branch said in a statement, last year we concluded an independent third-party investigation into the allegations that you mention and and you being rick and could find no evidence of any team tampering with the draft nor teams acting in a manner prejudicial to the welfare of the league i would ask that the people you have spoken to please provide it to the league and we will review it and determine if further investigation is required and rick obviously is not going to do that do you think the powers that be are tired of rick Oh, oh man! Do you think they might if, be a little fed up with Rick? If, if Rick West had wants a wants to ask you about something, are you not quivering in your boots? That's an instant fuck. Yeah, like that's an instant out loud it's, fuck. It's Rick West. It's not a bad hour. It's not a bad day. It's potentially a bad year. Yeah, our Westhead at you're fucked. Yeah, the other side of it is don't do stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, now he said uh, Rick said R Branch did not respond to questions about who was hired to scrutinize the claims that parents were paying for their sons to be drafted, the scope of the OHL's investigation, or how long it lasted, or how much the OHL paid its investigator. So, it's at this point, it stands, at least from I, I would assume from the OHL's position, it stands it's a closed case, this didn't happen. but uh, Or the investigator found no evidence that it happened. Mm -hmm. But, knowing what we know about how the OHL works... And there's a lot of stuff that you would be blown away by uh, if we could get somebody on who would talk about it. And very few people want to because of the power structures involved. Uh, would it surprise you at all? Oh, my God. No, it no, it wouldn't surprise me. Now, it, it, here's here's uh, the immediate thing that I thought of. So you're paying to get drafted into the OHL. That does not mean you're going to play in the OHL. My assumption is this has nothing to do with playing in the OHL. What would it be? It would be, well, it looks good to get drafted into the OHL because when you get drafted into the OHL, you don't have to play there. But it, it looks better on you. Uh, you could potentially... Get a scholarship at a university? Well, it looks good to your junior A team and you could potentially get a scholarship out of that uh, even if it's not in the States or Div 1 or Div 2. It could, could be, be in Canada. Canada. It's it would be beneficial to your career in the same way it'd be beneficial to get uh, drafted into the NHL and never play mm -hmm. versus your career AHL or who was never drafted. Well, imagine e even this, I mean, even this. I was thinking like whatever you do for a living, you're a lawyer, mm -hmm. you're a doctor, you're applying for a job. It doesn't matter what you do. You're, you, you do landscaping. Um, everybody who's drafted in hockey mentions it because it's an accomplishment, because it's very hard to do, because it's something worth mentioning. Man, if I was drafted into the O, I would put that on my resume. I'd, uh, for radio, I would have done that. Uh, I, I think that there's a tremendous amount of lifelong benefits that can go with the fact that you just got drafted into the OHL, because at the end of the day, it's an honor, if it you is, earn it yourself. It is an honor, and I would suggest... Um uh, it sounds like a shot at the kid, and I don't want it to be a shot at the, the kids because at the end of the day, it's the parents who are in the wrong, and the kids are kids. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, because if your parents say you're going to do something, then it's like, what what are you going to do? If, if your kid's not getting drafted into the O, it's because they, they don't deserve it. You know how many kids get drafted into the O in 2022? 303. It's a big draft. There's 15 rounds. There's fewer teams obviously but there are a lot of guys who and they have to do that because their players are are aged out very quickly right you got yeah. you got them for like max five years yeah 
but all I'm all I'm saying is, uh, like, if you're if you're paying thirty G's to get your kid drafted in the last fifty, um, oh boy, that's like I don't think it's it with to those. Parents. It's probably worth yeah, it. Yeah, I don't and, think it's with aspirations of. Uh, the kid playing in the O. No, it's probably like you're saying. It's a resume builder, or it's like a boost for the team they got drafted for. There's there's some shenanigans going on there, and like the OHL considers this a done deal. But when I see the tweet that says Rick Westhead has text messages that show proof that this happened, I am choosing to believe that Rick. That's I am your choosing to believe that those text me- text messages exist and that he can confirm. Oh, that they 30, exist. Yeah, they I believe. Thousand, I believe David exist. Branch when he says he doesn't know what's going on. I believe like, that too. No, and like yeah. not in, insulting him, I I believe him when he says it's news to him. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about it though is it, it, what it comes down to for me. Just just and again, this story has just broken as of about half an hour ago, so it's hard for us to to know maybe maybe more about this comes out tonight or Rick Telt talks more about it on Sports Center but for me this comes down to the investigator because if you're David Branch you obviously knew about this you didn't want it getting out to the public cuz it's sort of embarrassing but it's not like a career ender it's not a league ender it's not going to no one's going to question whether the OHL at least for this reason is you know great hockey or or um, good for kids or whatever it is no one's doing that but what is very interesting is if this investigator, if Rick can get it, Rick can get three or four separate coaches to get on, I guess, on the record, but uh, hidden names. If they can get this, but the investigator can't, that speaks to uh, probably not a great investigator. Or uh, how badly and, they wanted to find this information. Right. Right. And I, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this is damaging to the OHL at all. They're not involved. Well, th- this is, but uh, but you should expect that people are going to want to do this. Th- I guess I guess the question I have is, what does the OHL have to gain by solving this problem? Oh no, someone's giving large wads of cash to our teams that don't make a lot of money. Like it's it's a problem oh, I don't I think they're willing saying. to solve. Mm-hmm. Now, a- another question that I asked myself and I answered it inside my own head while you guys were talking is wait a sec if you can afford to grease an ohl team 30 grand just pay for school school's a lot more expensive than 30 grand in these the days states. especially in the states in the states for yeah. sure you're also you can't pay for that part of the resume like you can't just get that you need to pay for it you know mm-hmm. if you want that credential of i was drafted for your kid then that's what it costs yeah, yeah. i think too um it's funny because different sports do it differently but what i like about auto racing is that they're upfront about it uh, my my dad is rich, therefore I'm buying a spot on this team. Mm-hmm. Whereas in junior levels in hockey, what a lot of players and current NHLers have done, their teams have done if they have money, is to get them on the team, the, the, the parent will buy the junior A or junior B team. It's, it's happened with several players. It's and wild. It's on record, you can look it up. Yeah. And and so it's it's a way of like having a corporate sponsor without having a corporate sponsor. Um. And and this is going to happen throughout sports anyway. It happens in football. It happens in basketball. Whatever. But I thought I, I just think I'm like, you know, obviously what we want is the best talent at the top. But I look at like Formula One. There are pay drivers in Formula One right now. Mm-hmm. That's and that's the top 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 league. My- imagine imagine. There is a corporately sponsored person playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, one of the worst. That's cases. what that is. That'd be incredible. One of the worst cases of that in Formula One was the last couple of years with Nikita Mazepin. Oh, uh, who Steve, you wouldn't know, but he's you've he's, talked about this about the Russian. Russia. He's a Russian driver uh, who shouldn't be driving a Formula One car. He's not good he enough. He couldn't stay on the racetrack, and he'd crash it a million times. But his father is a very rich man who had a lot of Russian money and he sponsored the team. Yeah, I think his his, son got in there. His whole thing is that like he he was like a fertilizer. He was like their national fertilizer. It's it's one of those niche, but you ever talk to like what like your friends growing up and like their parents are like, oh yeah, he makes the tires for all of the Caterpillar trucks. And yeah, they're like their family's like super rich. It's one of those niche, but oh, they make the anchors for boats. Do you remember remember <laughs> you my know? first apartment? Right, kind of a nondescript building that we did the podcast in. The guy down the hall from me, uh, and I won't say where and who this person is because it's not fair to him. But his family, what's his government? He, he always had a Ferrari or something in the garage. Right, every year the supercar switch. And I remember talking. What to him was about the license it. plate? Uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but like, I, I drove like a normal car, and he drove a Ferrari. We live in the same building. I'm like, this is weird. And he's like, yeah, um, my family owns the company that supplies eggs to these fast food restaurants. Yeah. Oh wow. 
It's one of those, and they started it in the 1930s. You know? Yes, they, yes. They've been doing that ever Forever. since. Yeah. Jeremy Jacobs, one of the richest, most powerful guys in the entire NHL. I bet he's an oil man. He does ice napkins. cream. Ice cream. And then uh, ice cream. <laughs> he does ice cream. Doesn't he do like napkins and cutlery and stuff too? Like concessions stuff. Yeah. Ice cream. Ice cream. But then you think about how much ice cream there is in the world. There's a lot yeah. of ice cream. Go to the grocery store. There's ice cream. <laughs> there's a lot of ice cream. Yeah. So many kinds of ice cream. Anyway, long story short, there's a lot of money in sports yeah. and a lot of people who want in. What a surprise. So, um, so it will be very interesting to see where this goes from here because a couple things happen. First off, the story dies. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the most likely outcome here. Story's probably going to die. Right? It, it, I think I nailed it when I said, what's the point of solving it? Right. And then, but the other thing is, uh, kind of like what would happen with, because you remember the Kyle Beach situation, which Rick also broke, and this is, the, this is not related, but it came from the same reporter, which is why I'm drawing the conclusion here. Uh, you know, that story didn't really do much, and then it blew up. Hmm. And... Uh, and it was the public, mm. the public outcry that pushed for this, all this information to come out and for all that story to really come out that got the ball sort of rolling. Yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of going to be fascinating to see. I doubt, you know, in, in this day and age with news being as bad as, it, bad as it is, I think it's very hard for people to get outraged by parents paying some money for their kids to get drafted in the lower rounds of the OHL, frankly. Even though it's kind of gross. I'm sure uh, there's I, a lot of hockey parents out there who are like, yeah, good. More money went into my team. You know, yeah. Oh, more yeah. money went oh, into the system. We got better jackets or yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't have to pay this or if whatever. If I had 30000 I would do that too for my kid. You or know? you're the I'm owner. Sure there's a lot of hockey parents. Or you're the owner like of the OHL franchise yeah. and you don't have to pay for as much. All right. There's, a, well, I mean, now it's, it's kids paying versus like. I don't know. They were a family friend of the owners, which that sort of stuff happens as well. All the time. Uh, All the time. In there the are OHL. kids. There are kids who don't want to get drafted by certain teams, and they'll tell every team in the draft that they're going to the NCAA. Swear up and down they're going to the NCAA, and then they'll get drafted by a couple certain franchises in the late first round, and they'll end up at that franchise. I, I've heard it happen all the time. When, when I when I worked for Gina Retta for RBC Junior Hockey Magazine. I wish I understood the junior A aspect of everything more mm-hmm. than I did because we had we had the junior A report and our big guests would like usually be a lot more nervous than the OHL guys and I always like why? Wh- I always wondered about that I'm like yeah why and it's almost like there's more at stake really yeah you're not getting you're not it's not about getting drafted it's about setting up the the rest of your life right there was like I, I you know i had to research the players and book the guests and everything and i would have to give mean gene a little list of uh you know fun facts and things to know about them oh he really likes to i don't know this guy got lost in a boat and he had to mm-hmm. climb back up onto the boat yeah so there's like a story to tell yeah there was a kid do not remember his name it's not important but I was like, yeah, he's a, he's a goalie. He's he won MVP for this. He's he got a full ride to Maine. He did it, and he like stopped me. He's like, he got a full ride to Maine. I go, yeah. He's like, that's unusual. Like, because it's like these guys will get scholarships, but it won't be. You know, it very often won't be full. Right. So this guy got a full ride to Maine, University of Maine, because he was that good of a goalie. Like that's life changing. I'd love to know where that guy is now because. Fuck, I was the same age as those kids. So yeah, you were. He's probably like in his 30s now. Yep. And I'd love to know how much his life benefited from a full ride to me. Well, you can always Google Curtis him after the show. Joseph. <laughs> that what a man story. was yeah. Igor Shosturkin. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine? Oh, I wouldn't man. even know how to begin how to look up who that was. Um, well, I, I think if you can remember the name, you can look him up. I can't. I remember I looked up, I don't know why, but one, one day on the show... Uh, Steve brought up Jim the Net Detective Carey. Jim the Net Detective Carey, the so, mask. Yeah, so I thought it was I thought it was kind of fun, and I was like, I wonder what that guy's doing now because he had a couple of great years, won the Vesna, and then poof, disappeared. He's on LinkedIn. Yeah, I you can. He he runs like doesn't he run like an insurance company? It. I thought it was paper like Dunder Mifflin. Yeah, it was. It's something. It's something really nondescript. But he yeah. mentions that he was. You know, he's an NHL goaltender, and he's going to bring that kind of drive to your business. Uh, again, you something you put on. I would put that on my resume. The dude, you won the Fesna. 
He won a very controversial Vesna. Who cares? Too. He won it. Yeah. Doesn't matter what. Like, he broke, like, Hashik's streak of dominance. And if you go and look at the numbers... Anyway, he, he deserved to win Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. Vesna. Do you ever feel locked in? Yeah. Dialed? Like, li- no. Dialed No, in. like, locked in as in, like, you're in a cage and you just want to be let out. D- no. Okay. Like, well, some, like at the zoo. Yeah. Oh, well, then, the yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. The, the feeling of... Imagine being able to escape the zoo. Right? Harambe. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Simply not. We won't go there. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> What's next, Adam? All right. Well, the reason I, I bring this up is sometimes on online, you can feel locked out of things. Like Geo locked out of things. And that's where NordVPN comes in. It keeps your information encrypted, so you'll never have to worry about an IP or your location getting out. Also, here's the other great thing. Um, you will be able to unlock a ton of of content if you're bored of canadian streaming services why not try the uk ones why not try ones from japan or south america nordvpn brings it right to you with over five thousand server options there is no show that is completely out of your reach and here's the thing if you use the link nordvpn.com slash dangle you can receive a huge discount on a two-year plan plus four free months and there is a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee remember i talked to you about being caged Whoa. Not with NordVPN. No. No. Literally no risk. Uh, with their 30-day money-back guarantee, give it a try. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, they'll issue a refund and you can pretend the entire situation never happened. Check it out. NordVPN.com slash dangle and get your subscription started today. Get exclusive NordVPN deals right here. Again, it's NordVPN.com slash what? Harambe. No, dangle. <laughs> References from eight years ago, it's not included. risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, there's a chance that uh, by the time um, uh, you watch this show, the Leafs have already played the Panthers. But I do want to run through something. No, that they, there's no chance. There's no chance. Speed Jesse, at it today. Jesse, Jesse's getting it up quick. Ooh, um, Jesse, go. Brrr. But uh, but I do want to just, there's a Dangles doozy spot on at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Download the app. If you're in Ontario, 19 plus, please play responsibly. Um, and I just... Uh, um, I kind of wanted to run through some of these because there's always the Ontario born versus the Leafs. Okay. Can Steve name the four, five, six, seven, eight? Can you name four of the eight Ontario oh borns God. on the Florida Panthers? Uh, okay. And this is Ontario born to score a goal. And then if he names them, I'll give you the odds on it. Man, man. Um, Start okay. at the top. Aaron Eckblad. There's one. 490 if you go a yes on a. Four to, it's basically five to one. Wow. Sam Bennett is not listed here. Interesting. What? Sergei Bobrovsky. Maybe he's not playing tonight. I don't know. Or maybe they forgot. Maybe they're adjusting the odds. Sometimes they do that. They take it down. They put it back up. He's from Richmond Hill, so he should be. What the? What? Okay. <laughs> um, um, not Matthew Kachuk. Mm-hmm. Um, can I name four? Oh, no. How about a former Leaf? Former Leaf. Former Leaf. Oh, uh, Sam Bennett's injured. That's why. Yeah. There you go. I was about to say Mason Marchman, but it's not him. No, former Leaf. Former Leaf on the Panthers? Former Leaf, but he, he didn't play much for the Leafs and was traded by Lou Lamorello. Oh, Carter Verhage. That's right. Um, Carter Verhage. Come on, Steve. That's an easy one. Um Carter Verhage, by the way, to score two or more, you're going to get a three to one odd on that. Ryan Lomberg? Ryan Lomberg. Hey. hey. Three to one odds to score a goal tonight. Uh, the other ones, you've got Mark Stahl, you've got Eric Stahl, you've got Giovanni Smith, and Nick Cousins. Um, Sergey Bobrovsky wasn't there? On the. <laughs> I don't surprisingly think so. not. <laughs> I don't think so, man. All right, now let me ask you this. Where are you guys at with both? Nylander and Matthews to reach 40 goals because that's a, another one of the bets. So N- Matthews, Nylander, this is a Jesse bet. It's under I already the, took it. Yeah. It should be under the Blake's boozies. That's what we should oh, call it. No. Uh, no? Oh, no. We can try that again. We try something else. No. But anyway, no. Jesse came up with Here. this one. And so it's either yes, they both reach it or no, they don't. Yes is actually the odds on favorite at roughly two to one, although they're almost even. What oh, do you say? I had a better odds than that, I think. What I, do think you say? I think what I'd like to do is go home after that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was, it was Boozies. Little, um, Jesse's Juicies. I'm going to say yeah, because why would I cheer against the Leafs? No, but do you think it's actually possible? Uh, oh, yeah, 100%. Because they got, what, nine games yeah. left? 
And they both need four? They're both at 36. I just uh, checked on that. That's pretty good. They're yeah. both going to be going for it, too, right? Yeah. They, you tell me they don't want to hit that milestone? They kind of want to. Especially Willie. Yeah. Matthews give, has done it. Give it to them. Mm-hmm. Keep passing until they hit it. And then keep passing to Tavares. Because mm-hmm. I think he's next, right? At 32. Is Marner eight? at 30 yet? Are, are you going to get eight goals out of Tavares? In nine games? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I don't know, Screw man. Screw prepping for the there playoffs. There should be, honestly, we, could we get a Willie Tavares Matthews uh, all to hit 40 goals by Extremely the end of the season? Extremely unlikely. Yes, but that's why that's why I want to check it out. How close is Mitch to 100? He's six points shy of 100. Okay, what do we got, Jess? Oh, uh, Willie's at 36 goals. Austin's 36. John Tavares 32 goals. Mitch Marner's 28. Uh, 94 points. Give so. me Yarn Croak to hit 40. He only needs uh, 22. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot, Steve. Nah. Give me yarn crop to him. Okay. Well, Let's go. Um, I also I wanted to bring this up. 40, 40, 35, I think would be a cool. Because if... No. 40, 40, 35, 35 30. So Mitch gets two. Oh. JT gets three. No, I want... Austin gets four. I want 40, 40, 40 35, 35. That's what I want. No, that's no. too many goals for Mitch. And I want bunting 25, yarn croke 20, 20. <laughs> foot 10. 10. Only <laughs> we need Kerfoot to hit 10. Oh, boy. He needs one more. I remember oh, being told no. he was a 20 goal. He's hot score. as a pistol. <laughs> um, Give me Kerfoot I think, 10. I think 30 goals and 100 points is very doable for Mitch Marner. Just needs those six points, two goals. By the way, and JT getting 35 goals, Austin 40, Willie 40. That's a cool little round uh, numbers for the. For the Can you not see a scenario where Mitch Marner one day hits 40 goals? Absolutely. Yeah. If he would shoot a little more. Yeah. Like, he's, he's got a great shot now all of a sudden. The last couple of years, it's just emerged. But he doesn't need to. He ha- he can pass to Willie and he can pass to Austin. He yeah. can pass, and JT can be in front. Of see, like what he, that's what he prefers to do, too. Yeah. Like he, he, You could tell he sort of enjoys being like, oh, you guys didn't see that coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. When uh, somebody else scores. It's like... And I don't blame him for that. Like, it's sort of, he's he's a bit of a galaxy brain out there. Maybe that's Sheldon Keefe's genius. But all this time, we thought Mitch loves passing. No, he just loves surprises. Mm. And he passed for long enough that the surprise became shooting. So he, <laughs> he shot, and we're all like, whoa. Yeah. yeah and maybe. then he started scoring a lot. He's got a great shot, man. Who is a better passer, Mitch Marner or Wayne Gretzky? Uh, i got to go... Uh, Ontario oh, no. born. Mm-hmm. Oh no! Don't say. Oh, he played in the O. Put this on TikTok. Put this on TikTok <laughs> right now. Put it on TikTok. I'm gonna go with Michael Bunting. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Michael Bunting. Um, there would got be that Gretzky. At him. There mm. would be there would be people out there who'd be like, well, like Gretzky. Gretzky, Gretzky played in a really easy era, and his oh, passes cool. were not as creative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I did a era adjusted article years ago for Sportsnet where um cuz if you adjust for Gretzky's era all his numbers come down. They still kill everybody. Of course. They were so far ahead of everything no matter how you want to era adjust, he's still the best. Yes. Yeah. There's only there's a small handful of seasons in NHL history when you adjust for era that like even come close. To Gretzky, like Brett Hall, Mario had a couple seasons. Mario, Mario's interesting because like he was half in that mm-hmm. era, and but a little later, yeah. yeah but but no Mario one's close. had no Mario one's been close. healthy, he was the kind of guy that could score in the dead puck era. He could score 100 points. Yeah, like he, when he came back, it was un. When he came back the second time. Remember the first game against the Leafs? His numbers do not... Of course, I remember. Oh, man. That was disappointing. <laughs> His the numbers... Uh, there's no adjustment period. No. He was the best player in hockey, uh, went away to beat cancer, and came back and was the best player in hockey. And then retired and came back again. And was probably the best player in hockey. Yeah. There, it's funny. Came there back was, and played in the Olympics. There was there was like a five, six-year black hole between Gretzky retiring and uh, Crosby coming into the NHL where there was no mantle. Like there, there was no one who really. You we could all say, thought it was going to be Burray or Yager, right? Burray was on the. I mean, he had that unbelievable yeah. run in Florida. He was so good. Yeah. A and lot then, of taking turns. And then Yager with Washington, which was a bit of a disappointment, honestly. <laughs> uh, it's a legendary disappointment in the eyes of uh, Capitals. Fans. I'm surprised about that. Actually, there needs to be like a documentary on why that didn't work. Oh, I'd because he was great afterwards. 
Yo, summer content? Summer content. Summer content. Summer content. Let's get into One it. One of the most underrated things about this network is the incredible stories that come out of Agent Provocateur. And uh, us talking about Mario Lemieux reminds me of Marc Andre Fleury being on the show and him oh. talking about how uh, Mario put a gun to his head and forced him to sign a contract. Did not do that. <laughs> Did not do that. But Mario. An actual gun. No, you got to You got to hear You got to go back to that episode where. Basically, they're trying to get Mark Andre Fleury under under contract before rookie contracts existed, and like Mario's like, ah, come on over and, and live yep. at my house. And, uh, and Alan's like, you went over there. What happened? Like, and then you they did snuck. What? They here's how the story ends. It's it ends with them rolling up to Mario's house, Mark Andre grabbing his equipment and his clothes, throwing it in the back of a cab and leaving while Mario's out to like playing golf, like let. It's 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 a it's just such a crazy story. Um, Dude, what? <laughs> and Alan's got it's wild. millions of those stories. Yes, about a million different players. Those yes. are the ones he says into a mic. Yeah, like imagine what else he's seen. Like holy cow! You can imagine what we've heard. It's it's pretty crazy. Um, no, he doesn't tell us any of it. <laughs> uh, Toronto's number one priority last season, uh, last off season, was goaltending. This is Kevin Papetti on Twitter. He said they. Didn't sign Jack uh, Jack Campbell to a five year twenty five million dollar deal. They traded Peter Morazic with two years and three point five million per year on that contract, and they acquired Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov at six point five million total added to the roster while adding a third round pick. They improved their five on five gold save above expectation from twenty nine point six, which was 29th in the NHL, to I, I think it's negative twenty nine. Sorry, negative twenty nine point six to plus twenty one point eight, which is fourth in the NHL. <laughs> and he said, "Tough to ask for more given the free agent options." Let me give you through the the free agent options. He had Darcy Kemper, five year, twenty six point two five million dollar contract. Boy, they'd love to have Samsonov back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Campbell was uh, the second highest, mm-hmm. five year, twenty five million, and then it falls off considerably from there. Martin Jones got two million dollars somehow, some way. He's done okay. Okay. Stop By it. his standard. Eric Comrie got two years, 3.6 million total. He was doing okay. Ilya Samsonov, obviously with the Leafs. Yarrow Halak with the Rangers. He's done very well. Kevin Lankinen, 1.5 million for one year. Not bad. The only goalie remaining on this list that signed for more than a year was Charlie Lindgren, three years, 1.1 per, per year. You didn't he, mention he started uh, on. one of the greatest goalies of all time? Billy Husso, who didn't make it to free agency. He was traded to Detroit. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's why. I yeah, guess that's why yeah. Kevin put it that way. But even so, he said, Huso and Vanacek were moved as RFAs. Vanacek. Flurry signed before the free oh, agent market right. opened. And obviously, Talbot was traded. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so, he does, say, he does say, everything in Toronto revolves around show me what they do in the playoffs. But they don't have a time machine. It's tough for a, to ask for a better outcome at this point. And what did you say about Ilya Samsonov's record at home? It's 18-2-2. Two two. That's so... Stupid. So, so if, mathematically dumb. If you're trying like, to win the first round, which is what the Leafs are attempting to do ideally. for the seventh consecutive year, because they've officially clinched, by the way. Okay, so they've clinched the playoffs. They're probably going to play Tampa. And if you are trying to win, you got to do everything to stack the deck in your advantage, even if it gives you a one percent chance better. Having a goaltender who is eighteen two and two in the regular season, it could mean nothing in the playoffs, but it sure sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. It's a, basically in order. I can't believe I'm going to put this out into the universe. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. For the Leafs to get eliminated, they would need Samsonov to lose as many games as he has lost all season at home. Yep. <laughs> in order to get eliminated. Now, I suppose they could win some. Stop putting games that out on there. The road. Why would you put that out no, there? No, I'm going to say it. Oh. I'm, I'm telling you guys. <laughs> I said it last episode. I'll say it again. Tampa's washed. No, oh, Jesse. Whoa. Tampa. Jesse. Whoa. Tampa, like Jesse. Tampa, like Tampa Bay this season, it's giving me the exact same vibes. The run is over, and everyone's like, oh, I don't believe it. I don't want to see it. But when you see it, it's going to happen. The, the top of Brady Lightning? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's a, oh, I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Well, it's going to happen because that's how it's trending. And Toronto is a very good hockey 
team. By the way, we don't do a good enough job promoting our other shows. Uh, tune in to the Jesse Blake Sports Report, where he walks you through his first ever season watching the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> why? Just why? There hasn't been a seven-game stretch this season where Toronto would have lost a playoff series. Is that true? Yeah. Wow, even at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Wow. Depending on how you look at the OT. Here's the thing, though. They weren't playing if, a team. Were how were you staying like in a row? Depends on how you're looking at the OT. OT losses, sorry, I should say. What? They're losses? Yeah, but they're like shootouts and three on threes. No, shootouts are like shootouts. Overtime losses are like overtime losses. Three on threes. I don't know. You get a little, little iffy with it. I'm going to fight you. Fight they're a very good hockey team. One team is clearly better than the other team. There's no reason the Leafs should lose in the first round to Tampa Bay. There hasn't been a reason for a few years. <laughs> this is the year. Fuck. I hate you. <laughs> I, thought you had, I thought you had a vision. What no. To it? Since everyone stopped chirping me for the vision. <laughs> that was the past. That was very the past. No, it's the vision part two. Yeah. Return of the vision. Vision boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> vision boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Electric vision boot. The vision strikes back. There, there it go. is. It's the, the vision two when nature. I calls. really did try. <laughs> Br- bring it out again. I, it went so well last year. <laughs> You're just, oh, wait! I was just. It struck me. It's the vision. It struck me that you know I was worrying and and wearying even that the Leafs were going to lose in the in the first round again but but then I had a, a vision Adam I had a vision oh, yeah. where <laughs> where they make way. it past the second round now, I know Jesse doesn't believe me <laughs> <laughs> but I had a vision that they will be victorious and even win the cup that was my vision yep right I had it we call that uh, the vision two. Golden well, give me receiver. that look, Jesse. <laughs> I had a vision. You remind me of the blind guy from Muppet Treasure Island. Have you ever seen that? Where he walks into the... Have you ever seen Muppet Treasure Island? No. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh. I don't remember that. He's like, he's, he's like an evil pirate at the beginning. And he's like... He's like, ah, little girls. And they're just like, it's like, it's like Rizzo and, uh, and Gonzo. Fu- oh, man. No. It's so funny. No, no I don't If you've seen it, you know. Kids movies. Get into it. There were a Kid Lion King 1.5. Yes, there was. Yeah. What, what? was Because the, there was a Lion King 1, 2, and 3. And then there was Did a 1.5. Yeah. Because like Scar's them. kid comes back. And he's like, yo, I'm I'm Scar's kid. And then Who's he's, not mentioned in the first movie. No. Oh. And you know, Scar well, Scar was royalty, right? He probably had some affairs on the side, you know. Yeah. But well but uh he wouldn't be the first royal to have like, you know, people that they hid. But Well, uh, like make make a going, list. <laughs> you're going down a long road. But here. but but uh then the the thing where they cheaped out, this is where Disney Disney actually went through a thing in the nineties and there's like articles written on this mm-hmm. where they did a bunch of sequels instead of coming up with new content they wanted to do they wanted to capitalize on the vhs market and they would reuse yeah. entire scenes uh, yes they yeah. would use the animation and everything so uh the scar one was interesting because they like none of the movies actually climaxed properly they were always like oh the bad guy becomes good and we're all friends the end and that's what happens scar's kid becomes good he ju- comes oh, over to the spoiler game. alert. Yeah, I'm spoiler, spoiler alert, alert everybody. Lion watch it. King 3. I don't even think they have that on Disney Plus. Like I don't think you can watch it. In you the probably. first Lion King, Scar fucking dies. Yeah. I like that one where he fucking <laughs> dies. <laughs> It's heavily implied that he was eaten alive screaming. <laughs> what Kids is movies. What does he die? Well, I have, it's been a long he time. He dies too. of hyenas eating yeah. him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. It's heavily implied. It's heavily implied like, they fucking ate yeah, him. Yeah, they're like licking their fingers and stuff. Hold on. I'm mm-hmm. looking. I'm on my Disney Plus right now. Uh, Lion, Lion King, King 1.5. Can we find it? That was like the Tabo- uh, Timon and Pumba. I mean, Tamumba. Tamumba. Tamumba spinoff, right? Oh, like probably. probably. Oh. It's like it's like their journey to doing stuff. Oh, where they learn to sing and dance. Yeah. And eat bugs. Yeah. Okay. Eat lots of bugs. You ever? Oh, you got I got, got him. Adam? Yeah. There's Lion King. Of course, it's on. Uh, Lion King Two: be. Simba's Pride. Lion King One and a Half. Uh, Lion King Sing Along. Lion King Two: Simba's Pride. Sing Along. I remember Lion King Sing Along. The Lion Guard, which uh, Everly watches, which is on Disney Channel. Um, Guess you, what I'm showing, Leo. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, uh, Lion. The actually the Sing along Lion Guard's sure. good. Lion Guard's good too. Just check it out. When do kids uh, 
learn to dance in a way that's not just jumping. <laughs> Because we're at the jumping phase. <laughs> he jumps, and then the pace of a different song changes, and he just jumps differently. <laughs> and it's just... I think that's how a dance starts. It starts with the jump, and then, you, and then you're able... That's and then you start to control dance. the jump. Yeah, that's how I jump. What, yeah. what do you mean, yeah. when does it change? That's yeah. how I dance. Never. How do you dance? Uh, you know, I just usually jump on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Until my calves now, give out. I remember at your wedding they played Loch Lomond, which is a Loch big Lomond. which is a big song in Scotland. Uh and and that is a lot of holding hands and jumping and going into a circle. Yeah. It's it is. it's more hopping than <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah, see? Doesn't end. And yeah. never, you never grow out of it. And the reason is because you're wearing a kilt and you're very hot and it allows uh, uh, a breeze. Yeah. Up now, that's why you're hot. Did you wear a hot kilt? It's more no. up your... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the Scottish members of uh, SL's family wore kilts to your wedding. You yeah. didn't wear one. Though, I right? didn't wear a kilt to my wedding, but I have since worn a kilt to at least two. Did you wear underwear? Oh, you yeah. Better. You're not supposed to. That's like... The yeah, thing. but like... Yeah, if decency, it, If it's like the 1800s or whatever. <laughs> Although... You know, I mean, how else are you going to moon the English? It's Come on. true. It's surprisingly hot. Right. <laughs> what, the kilt? Oh, yeah. yeah. You well, would not it's surprisingly think... cold in Scotland. Yeah. No, of course it's, it's like, hot. It's not. It's a weighted blanket. When you go to Aberdeen in the middle of the summer, what mm. temperature is it regularly? So you bring a, bring a sweater. It's, it's 12 degrees. Yeah. Why do you think they wear wool sweaters all the time? It's freaking cold there. It's freaking cold. Um, there. Okay. There's a lot of oh shucks about, um, like, uh, not oh shucks, aw oh shucks. Oh. About Luke Shen's return to Toronto. Um, obviously, you know, there's the fact that everybody loved Luke Shen back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, until they didn't. Until they didn't. But that's because the team sucked and it wasn't his fault. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but we didn't care at the time. No. At the, at the, at, Boo, get at, out. And then it was like Phil Kessel came to town. It's like, oh, we hate him too, even though he scores 30 goals every year. Um, uh, uh, the next uh, ah shucks moment, or I guess oh shucks moment, is uh, Luke Shen's new... Neighbor is his first NHL defense partner, Thomas Copperley. When I saw that story, for some reason, the first thing I thought of was, wow, they really put him with Copperley immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's how bad their team was. It was terrible. Yeah. Terrible team. Yeah. It was a, it was a bad team. And I assume uh, because it's Copperley, Luke never crossed the red line. Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> like in his own end. Because he's always got to be, be I mean, back for all uh, for all the things Caberlet did well, the things he didn't do well included defense. And they sure held on to him, right? They There's, sure did. There were many opportunities to trade Thomas Caberlet for big value. Yeah, and they were like, ah, oh, we can't. We simply couldn't. I loved him, but uh, and I mean, he did his job. He, he was, did well, but when he had a good supporting cast, he was great. Yep. And I will say, him and Luke Shen being neighbors is cute as hell. It is. Thomas Carbolet, also a really nice guy. I've met him a couple times and just a genuine person. Really like him. We, uh, oh yeah, you weren't there. Neither of you were there. We were at, uh, we were walking through the the halls of Air Canada Center when we were, or sorry, whoop, Scotiabank Arena. Uh, when we um, went to the Leafs Avs game and Carbolet walked by because he did the jersey presentation. Oh I, yeah, I he was the to, alumni. To someone from the military. And uh, he walked by. And I think it was producer Drew who was like, oh, it was Carberley. Why don't you go say hi? I was like, because I don't know him. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's why I didn't say hi. I don't know. Whoa, 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 wait. Tom. Sup? You watch YouTube, right? (laughs) How you doing? Yeah. I complained about you for like, how long did you play? Ah, Like four years. Mm. I don't think that guy's your friend. No. I do not. I don't know that man. Do you guys remember in 2020 when the world shut down and Thomas Caberlet delivered food for his wife's restaurant? That's right. Love that story. That's a great story. Uber Eats deliveries for uh, Quanto Basta. I didn't know. I didn't realize that was his wife's restaurant. It's a good restaurant. Oh, you've been? I've been. I have been to that restaurant. Yes. Do I don't know if it's still open, but I have discount because it's related to the Leafs and you have season seats? Well, as the owner of the Leafs and therefore, yeah, okay. um, yeah, yeah no. I, like, hey, hey, owner. Hey, boss. Yeah. Hey, boss, man. <laughs> People Thanks just for the cool him, alumni jersey. People just bring him free food like when Homer Simpson is fantasizing about being a mob boss. Bene. <laughs> and then someone brings him a meatball. Molto bene. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's a good that's, reference. Yeah, you're just walking through the streets and people go, Don Adam, uh, will, you, <laughs> will you please have my spaghetti? And you go, 
Bene. <laughs> Benny. Yeah. Benny. Um, Malco uh, Benny. And a little shout out to Justin Bieber this morning because, or I Why? guess this out. Well, first off, there's a big, uh, there's a line outside Real Sports this morning. Oh, yeah. uh, I guess there's a new Drew House drop. I so. love when a local mom and pop hits it. Yeah, well, no, but I love it. Sh- but beyond that, beyond that, um, uh, Tim Hortons uh, and Justin Bieber and the Leafs have teamed up um, for a House of Hockey summer long league that provides free access to ball hockey for youth facing barriers in their communities. Woo. So it'll take place all over the GTA. Um, Drew House, the Maple Leafs, and other organizations are going to donate equipment, jerseys, sticks, merchandise. And provide skills coaches and teach players basic fundamentals. All part of the MLSE Foundation, um, and uh, they're saying that I guess they they found that uh, income level and lack of resources was preventing sixty percent of participants from playing sports in general in Ontario. Six zero percent. You know who talked about that recently? Um, like, hey, why didn't you? It was a pro athlete mm-hmm. who was good at more than one sport, and one of them was hockey. And they were like, hey, why didn't you play hockey? And he talked about how it was way too expensive. J.J. Watt. Yes. Yes, I saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every NHL player is like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have to play against J.J. Watt. He's Can you a imagine hockey player. Too. Like, w- watching his videos of him on the ice, he's still decent. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. Yeah. yeah, he posted like a P.K. Subban like, training video where he's doing panic crossovers. Yeah. And he's, it's, <laughs> he's good. He's the closest human being to Johnny Bravo that I've ever seen. Like body wise, just a triangle. Yes, just a yeah. all shoulders. He is the mountain from Game of Thrones. Like he's huge, just big. And he, they would have been had had hockey not been so expensive. Those those kids, the 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 Watt brothers, all three of them have made it to the NFL. All three of them. That's important. Yeah, I it's mean, important it the, to the conversation. I think it's kind of fascinating that you like the one thing I will say is I'm glad they're doing this. Um, hockey does lose out not just. Um, in bringing people from like new Canadians and new Americans in like people from other countries who don't necessarily have the extra income. Uh, but also, um, you lose out on the best, just athletic people. Yes. Right. Yeah. You just do because you don't know you could be born athletic and be completely no money or be completely stupid rich. Um, but when you have this sort of access, like what they're doing, I know it's ball hockey, mm-hmm. but that's still a gateway to the game. So w- with that, when I saw it yesterday, it was it was so exciting because I love the fact that it's ball hockey because I feel like ball hockey kind of gets lost in in the hockey thing because we we focus on ice hockey obviously, but ice is so expensive that ball hockey is is the gateway to hockey. Yeah, and it's the thing you do as a kid. And I wish ball hockey was a little more organized, and I love that they do this because it's easier. Mm-hmm. You know, it 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 drops the equipment expenses you know it makes it easier for kids to get into hockey and that's all we want we want ball hockey to kind of be a gateway drug to ice hockey yeah, yeah. And, you know, and at least and be a fan of it like you don't have to yeah. actually like steve didn't play no right. he's learning as an adult mm-hmm. but, but you play least. ball hockey on the street dude yeah. there was no more competitive sport oh. in east scarborough outside of school or in than ball hockey mm-hmm. very it, competitive. it kind of makes me wonder why it's not like kind of a mainstream popular yeah, and, sport and it gets, and it gets more, yeah. lost because of how important like ice hockey is but i feel like i ball hockey definitely deserves some more recognition i love that it's an easier way because a year or outside uh during the summer thing you can do in in canada i guess lower states you can do it year round but like um i love the fact that they're getting these kids into hockey through ball hockey it's a very cool little uh, tidbit in there more very cool. more people listening to this right now have a ball hockey related scar than a hockey ice <laughs> hockey related <laughs> scar. yeah and yeah, you're yeah that's the other thing about ball hockey is you're not protected you, a slash no. feels like a slash the worst one because i would always be goalie well i took a slap shot to the nuts when i was five i wrote about that in my book that's how i discovered them the the worst one though what I would I had these like flimsy dog shit goalie pads, and when I got those goalie pads though I felt invincible because that meant meant I could slide around on the pavement like just willy nilly like no consideration. But the problem is if you didn't wear them tightly enough, they would just completely go to the side. Yep, yep. yep. I and remember that one time I dropped to my knee. The pad went to the side, and like right on the kneecap, there was a mm. pebble. Oh, ah! that's like pain. just oh god, it was awful. We had we had uh, I remember Steve's 
Steve's school was St. Brendan's and my school was Joseph Howe, uh, which was a feeder school uh, to high school, both feeder schools to high school. And we had a best on best seven game series between this, nice. the, 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 the Catholics and the, the and the whatever and the Protestants. <laughs> no, well, they weren't even Protestant. It was just like whatever. They, we were we were the we were just the you know we were just the whatever. It was North God. versus the South. Yeah. It was the Confederate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was all about states' rights. No, I'm thank kidding. God, Adam Adam and his friends didn't invite Wayne Simmons because he went oh, to that yeah. school. Yes, he did. Go to our school. School. Yeah, but we we was were all the fell in love with history. No, no, no! It's when not. the religions but were fighting in grade nine. We got into this fight. We got like a legitimate fight. The ball o- hockey reformation over a over a uh, uh, over like di- over like lunch. We were sitting at the thing, and we're like, "No, guys, we're way better at ball hockey than you." They're like, "No, you're not. We're way better than you." And we played, oh. and we played over the course of two two days, and we we never played the seventh game, but we were tied three all, and just never reconvened to do the seventh game. That happens. Uh, that but happens when you're we, it was, there were fights. <laughs> Some people had their shirts to, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like legit. My buddy Derek and your friend uh, Brendan, remember Brendan? They yeah, got into an actual fight. He was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's a grown up now, and there's no hard feelings. But I was like, yeah, hit him. <laughs> At the time, I was like, yeah, hit him. It was, it was really good. ball hockey is intense, man. I remember there being like legit fights on people's front lawns, and it's funny. Fisher face washed him. Oh yeah, and then in the, but here's the thing: is that the neighbors, the, glove, the neighbors who are watching this. Don't stop the fights. Mm-hmm. No, they, Why they're like, yeah, no, let let them sort it you're out. Your children, I wouldn't stop kids fighting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if seven year olds want to box and dude, on the we lawn, were like fourteen. <laughs> Who's running out of their house to stop a group of high schoolers yeah. fighting each yeah, other? Yeah, I'd be like, no. that sounds like their pro- parents' problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I played more foot hockey than ball Whoa. hockey growing up. Foot, foot hockey is intense. Hockey huge. Th- this is extremely important. Were mini sticks used in foot hockey? This was a school to school issue. Uh, not all the kids at my school had mini sticks, so most often, like, not. No. Okay, so my school wasn't. William G. Davis, which was up the street, yep. did. Mm-hmm. So maybe it was, again, a Catholic versus public thing. I don't know. I went to Catholic school, so. Huh? Yeah. See? So. I know. Did I'm you, outnumbered here. Well. The Catholics versus the rest of us. And this, this is, is some very, of Europe. This We're is like some life. of Europe. <laughs> this is very important. <laughs> this, is, this is very important. <laughs> Because I would be goalie for foot hockey too. <laughs> yeah, were goalies allowed to use their jacket? Yeah, jacket inside out. Oh, is, is goalie. Yeah. that was so. That yeah. was sometimes loud. I'll tell you what we did at uh, Joseph Howe. Or oh, wait, do you have something to say? No, no. What'd okay. You so this is where, by the way, so we created this game, and I remember being a part of like the crew that started this, and it became you know what? Sometimes a, a game like takes off and everybody's involved. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So it was like almost a half soccer field, and you know you have your There's lunch. Too many fucking people playing. You have your lunch boxes at, <laughs> as your goal as your you know your things. Yeah. And then so the goaltenders would have baseball gloves, and you played with two tennis balls, one on each side, to make sure the Oops. action was going. And I remember that is the game, and it was foot hockey. That is the game where Justin Fisher and Wayne Simmons got into a fight. <gasps> Oh, you were there for that? I was. I would. Yes, absolutely. I was there. I watched it. I was the goalie. Oh my! So God. I was. I, I loved playing goalie for some dumb reason because you know it does doesn't feel good. But I remember. <laughs> I remember they. I forget somebody. Some you know. And and also by the way, our foot hockey you could hit. <gasps> okay, we didn't have. The, we, and we, yeah, would, we didn't have hitting. And, and somebody. Re- and it oh. ended. Yeah. Uh, when somebody went to the hospital because they got hit so oh hard. God. And and it was funny because I believe it. And our science teacher, Mr. Allen. May he rest in peace. Uh, came. He, did he, he pass said away? he did pass away. I assume so, Jesse. And uh, no, that's just, that's just so dark to bring up. Randomly. Oddly enough, he, pa- he passed away that. Year. I feel Sorry. like you could have left. What it happened? He passed away that semester. So it was one of the last conversations I remember having with him. Oh, and he oh. came in. He comes in. He comes like into the science class. Down this road. He comes into the science class. He's like, and he's an he's like he's an old school guy. And he used to tell us about how they used to play hockey with road apples, which is ca- horse shit. Yes. That's how they played road. Ho- they played hockey with yeah. frozen Clap poo. shit bombs. Frozen poo. Clap shit bombs. Clap shit bombs. Yeah. So I Mr. love grandpa's stories. Just so don't interrupt. So Mr. Allen walks in and he's got, he's one of these guys. He's got, um, he's got his shirt on, nicely pressed, and he's got suspenders. Mm. And he starts looking at us. And you know the way an older man looks at you and you're, it strikes fear into you a little bit. And he's like, uh, this is mostly for the gentlemen in the class. Uh, ladies, and again, old school. Ladies, less so for you, but still important. And he said, gentlemen, what's happening to you right now is that you are um, unaware of how physically quickly you're changing. He said, what would have been possible a couple of years ago without incident, i.e. hitting each other, mm. 
is now extremely really dangerous and he said he said you know a lot of you are, are growing very quickly it was almost like a it was almost like the birds and the bees mm -hmm. but just about your shoulders and your hips yeah. and about how strong you are he's like many of you don't realize that and he said and this is how he finishes the conversation and if i see one of you lay another hit out there you're going to be in detention for an entire month and i'm calling your parents whoa yeah and I was like, whoa. because it was pretty serious but you don't realize at that age how you can lay somebody out, right? I think what Adam might be leaving out of this story is another incident that you might have been there for. What's that? During a game of tackle soccer, mm. Wayne Simmons broke a guy's collarbone. I did not know that. You didn't know no. that? Tom, no. Tom. Tom S. Oh, really? Yes. Is that what happened? He broke his collarbone. Well, not on purpose, right? No, <laughs> no he, he, st <laughs> he stood <laughs> over him and he said, it. long live the king. And he went... <laughs> Oh, just stomped right Wayne on. Wayne was, without question, one of the nicest guys that uh, that I went to school with. I remember Wayne very, very well. He was a great guy. So, And I knew Tom very well as well. Also a nice guy. Tom would have been the type to get too upset about that. So, his collarbone. Wow. I forgot about that completely. Damn. Um, okay. Back to hockey for a second. Let me ask you this. Free agency for a second. McDavid. No. Oh, free agency. Let's go. We're going okay. into free agency. It's the Leafs. Dry title. And there are certain players that if you're Kyle Dubas, you don't want to let go to free agency, including yourself. Yes. Right? Yeah. But Kyle Dubas' contract aside, Michael Bunting is a unrestricted, uh, unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. Yeah. Mike Johnson was on overdrive mm -hmm. the other day. And let me ask you this. Would you be comfortable with a six-year, twenty-four million dollar contract for Michael Bunting? Oh, math. Do the math. Four million Four a season. Four million a season. No. No? No, because somebody's going to pay you know, around that and at least can probably just pass on that. Get better value otherwhere. Oh. Somewhere else. Do they... With Michael Bunting, we have to acknowledge that... Oh, no. Oh, no. Am I going to use the word? Oh, no. Intangible. He has an element. I'm not going to use the word intangible. I will say, though, that he has an element that is not common and it's definitely not common with this team and this organization they don't have guys who they can just call up or develop that they've drafted who can pot 20 goals a season competently play in at least your top nine um and also be an absolute rat if they do this deal i'm gonna sit there and say why couldn't they just do the hyman deal well, are we? So that's a good question. Five point five. I think it was six years. The, you know why? No, but, but why this is Michael Bunting at four. We're yeah. quoting. Why don't you up? Oh, up why didn't you up keep a million Hyman. and a half? Just do the Hyman deal a year ago. You mean like keep Hyman? So, well, or two years. Here's ago. the problem with doing the Hyman deal a year ago. You can't do that because as of yet they haven't invented time travel. So ah, do you, oh, do you not? never no. relitigated anything in sports? <laughs> well, this is oh, what I'm saying. No. This is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, this is a new concept, Adam. We're inventing a new podcast. Jesse, you, you can't, can't just we, go off script where we like can't that. go back and okay. talk about something that no. happened and maybe do something we else. We can talk about it, but because no, you made can't. one mistake, now you got to go make another? You let one guy go, so you have to let go of another? No, when if they sign the deal, I'm going to question, hey, why can't you just do that one? I'm going to ask you oh, in retrospect. I'm, I've Jesse Hyman is on pace for like 75 goals yeah, and 150 an points. Unreal year. I've already had that conversation in my head and it's unequivocally they made a mistake. <laughs> exactly. I don't think there's even a debate here. Like they so, fucked up. Yeah. No, that's a very good point. Yeah. You look at that in retro because that's my first thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second thoughts probably like, okay, now let's not make that mistake again. Maybe it's the right thing. But so, is Michael Bunting Zach Hyman? I don't think, I don't think I, He's so. got more of a finishing touch, but I don't think he has the I don't driving so that, at all. that Hyman has. One thing yeah. I will say about Hyman, no, and at the I time agree. we were like, wow, that seems really expensive based on what he's what he had done. Now and look at what he's doing. Yeah. And people are like, well, you know, you had to have, like, if you had Hyman, you wouldn't have Bunting. I think you could have had both. Because what was Bunting? It was a reality. Well, for sure. Because with Hyman, you would have had to get Bunting. Because you wouldn't have been able to afford anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to go back and look at the cap-friendly situation. Maybe the Leafs just flat out couldn't have afforded it. Probably true. But uh, I, I think... I you think, wouldn't have had a goalie. Yeah, that's true. Like you're That not, probably would have been a good thing. <laughs> just play with six six attackers. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I think, it's fine. I think at the end of the day, Michael Bunting for six years... Like, 
there's something about that for me that doesn't feel right. And also, I'm going to ask, <laughs> you know, I know he may be better in some ways. What's the difference between Cali Yarncroke and Michael Bunting? Bunting does stuff that Yarncroke can't. What? Like what? Well, they do. They're just completely different players is how I look at it. Uh, Yarncroke is far faster, mm -hmm. far more. Has um, some finish. He's got a career high in points right now. He's got some finish. He's got a little less. I will say, and not and not not as much rat, uh, not no, nearly no, as much rat. Not even close. Uh, he's more versatile. Um, he's also later in his career. So, <laughs> like the the even though Bunting's forty, but I, lo is, so I love those. I'm jokes. not saying they're direct comparable. What I will say is 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 Michael Bunting really worth 1.8 million per year more than Callie Yarncroke? And Callie Yarncroke signed a four year contract. Mm -hmm. We're talking about six for Michael Bunting, or is this a he's a leaf therefore? he gets a lot more attention than the same player on a different team. What is the... There is a leaf. There is a bit of a leaf tax. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a bunting comparable on another team to like look at what they're paid. First name it came to is Travis Konechny, and Konechny's just more high-end. Yeah. So that's not the great. By the way, I hope Philly still tries to trade him because I would really like to see yeah, him be a leaf. Yeah, cool. But then, like, do you pay more for Konechny and lose Bunting? Yes. But you also have to All give day. up. But you have to give up assets for Konechny All day. as well. I love Konechny. I they do should love have Konechny. drafted him. Hey, I have an idea. Who? How about both? Why not both? Why not both? I hope oh, the salary cap. cap goes up an extreme amount and we get some fun in the NHL. No, I, we don't like that. I think Sucks. what I would say with the rumored Bunting contract is six years is a lot of years. And That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, no, but... I think you could get him at a lower cap hit if you're offering him six years. I could see something like a $16 million contract four times four. Mm -hmm. That's a little more palatable. If it's six years, I'm sorry, you're taking under four. Well, I think that Mike Johnson's point was if they're, and I and again, I'm paraphrasing for Mike here, so go back and listen to the interview, but essentially he said I asked around and that was the you know market value that NHL GMs and people around the league were kind of giving it. Listen. Yeah, no, I know. You have to yeah, you have to ask people in the industry what they might think. You do, but uh anytime you go around the league and ask non-Leafs teams what the Leafs should do, like what do you think they should give Hey, Bunting? way too much. I don't know. I think a lot. Yeah. I th I think way too much. Yeah. yeah I, they they should give us all their first round picks. Mm -hmm. 8 times um, what did Pasternak just get? Yeah, just <laughs> around that. Okay. Around there. That's one but of I, the best deals in hockey. Just because you brought it up. Oh, Pasternak. yeah. Oh. That's it's, unreal. It's not so bad. It, but here's another important thing with Bunting is his stock internally appears to be going down. Does it not? It does. Yep. He's on the third line now. Yep. Arguing with the coach, getting asked about it, denying everything. Well, yeah. Eh. Is he a Sheldon, problem? Sheldon brushed it off. Coming I, up at the top oh of the my hour. God. Nah. Whoa. <laughs> Man. Is Michael Bunt Bunting the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Always has been. No, you know what? Like... More, I think the third line could be a better role for him. Well, sure, and and you know what, you want maybe a guy like that to be on the the, the third line on a really really good team like the Leafs are. Third right? line, second power play. Um, if a guy gets hurt, he's on first or second. Like he can play on any of the top three lines, and I'm comfortable. But then I think it was uh, Justin Bourne posted his. Um posted his uh, what he thinks the playoff lineup's going to be. And this applied to Nyes and not Bunting. But mm. he took Aston Reese out and put Nyes on the third line. I just don't think that's going to happen. Because I look at that line, I'm like, what is it, though? What's its purpose? Other than it's a collection of three players who are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, you, your third and fourth line need to... I mean, you basically have two options. Bang and crash, defensive shutdown. Mm-hmm. You're you're not putting Nyes on. You might put him on the bang and crash, but you're not putting him on the shutdown. Not to start his friggin' career. Steve, as a ginormous Leafs fan, right now Matthew Nyes is playing in the I forget the name of the tournament. I don't see what my I size has. To frozen be Four. Okay. Frozen, is that what they call it? Or the Frozen? Yeah, the NCAA yeah. Yeah. Championship Hockey. Yeah. Men's college. Hockey, college tournament. High stakes things. Are you rooting for his team to lose so that he comes to the Leafs earlier? Leafs no. earlier. No. Or do you want to see him go to a championship and win that and then come off of that high? Which camera is it? Which camera is it? What, your, what, camera, what? your camera four. What camera am I four? staring Steve's down the camera barrel four? of? Okay. Yeah. Leaf fans, 
You want Matthew Nice to win because it gives him experience winning so that when he joins the Leafs, you hope he does what? And the team does what? Win! So listen, I understand getting him with the Leafs earlier appears to be the thing to do. Get him accustomed, whatever, whatever. No. We need winners here. A winning culture, winning experience to provide winning in the future. Thank you. Okay. Vote, vote Glenn. Uh, the Leafs are... <laughs> vote Glenn. <laughs> vote Quimby. <laughs> vote uh, Quimby. The Leafs currently... Uh, Ignore the giant sack of money I gave Minnesota to uh, lose tomorrow. <laughs> you would you would have a fantastic Mayor Quimby costume for like a Halloween one. Year. Oh, yeah. How come you haven't done you that would, yet? You would be a great Quimby. You're I don't know, blippy. Jesse. Mayor Quimby's fat. No. What, are, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Stop filling all the jars in this office with mini eggs. If the Leafs win tonight. Oh, those have been there. The, these brownies yeah. have been here the whole time. So fucking yeah, show. Jesse's girlfriend made those. I'm yeah, going to say Jesse's fiance, who we won't admit that they're engaged. <laughs> you won't admit. Not engaged. They are engaged. Um, they went to Greece last year. They're for sure engaged. Congrats. Uh, but uh, she made Ferrero Rocher brownies? Yeah, Ferrero mm, Rocher brownies. Boy. Gabby, thank you. No, I haven't had one yet, but I'm... Because I know my stomach's going to... You know my stomach. It's the worst. But. I had too many yesterday. So Were they good? I can't. They're unbelievable. Oh, I mean, God. the shit out of those. Um, <laughs> if you're going on points percentage, okay, the Leafs are fourth in the NHL currently. Okay, so if they, if they win tonight, uh, they will leapfrog both the Vegas Golden Knights and Jesse's New York Rangers. Both okay? of them stink. Now, the Rangers, by the way, are both eight. Garbage. <laughs> Here's what's crazy. Vegas and New York. Vegas is 8-2-0 and on their last 10, and they're on a... Uh, they've lost the second of those two games, by the way. Like, the loss has happened in the, uh, their last game. Against and, uh, the Oilers. And then the Rangers are 8-1-1 and one in their last 10 games. The the wow. Leafs, who are pretty good, are 6-3-1. and one. Um, There's been a correction, eh, on the uh, on the teams that added big. Oh, yeah. Because remember, a lot of them sort of stumbled out of the trade deadline. Well, because you have to work out chemistry. Oh, man. Even Patrick and Kane that's why good. Matthew and I should lose. Vote wild. So here's, but I want to remind Leaf fans... <laughs> The reason I bring those up is like I know everybody wants to see Matthew Nyes in a Leafs jersey. I'm with you. But if you're like Matthew Nyes is going to contribute to the playoff run, this team. He may. He may. But this team isn't going to win or lose based on Matthew Nyes showing up and playing for the Leafs. If he doesn't play a game, it probably doesn't affect the outcome. Yeah, You, you know what would really tie this room together? What's that? It, we need a lampshade. We, we need a better lampshade. You know what I mean? No. No. It's, oh, you need. Oh, no, I see what you're how saying. How are the walls? How's the layout? Right. Where do you put the chair? Mm -hmm. Where are we at on the chair? <laughs> if you don't, if your room doesn't have a good foundation, a lampshade's not going to do shit. Yeah. yeah. And, like if your TV has glare on it, <laughs> then throw the whole goddamn building it's away. It's terrible. So what listen, if you have shitty mic levels? Yeah. Jesse. That also. <laughs> that also. Uh, <laughs> What? You know what? We yeah, should also blame Maddie for that, too. She's yeah. brand new. Way to go. Put the blame on the new Take one. Take it off of me. Sorry, Maddie. Starwipe. How do you think this Star is going? <laughs> Starwipe. Yeah. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, ew. We need, a, we need oh. to frame Adam's camera better. We need to zoom in on him. So, it, yeah. We need to get a little closer. But we'll yeah. Can we, can well, it's because we got the nice... Oh, this is... Can you wipe back to Adam? Adam? There it is. There it is. Right oh, there. that was a beautiful oh. one. Oh, well yeah. Done. Uh, that yeah. Good one. I, could, I should probably move in a little bit closer so we don't have this in it, but whatever. No, no, no. We just um, need to zoom in. Okay. So, so uh, where were we? <laughs> well, I guess my point is that you want Matthew Nice to win, and if you think Matthew Nice, again, like I said the other show, if Sandine and Engvall are the reason you don't win the cup, you weren't going to win the cup. If Matthew Nice is, if you believe Matthew Nice is this coming savior, uh, chances are the guy takes a couple years to develop at the NHL level, like you know most players. And if he doesn't, and I eat shit, great. I'm cheering for that. I'm cheering to be wrong. I want this guy to be a great NHL player. But if you think that he's going to make, if he's going to be like win, Conn Smythe winning player for the Leafs uh, in the playoffs this year. You're right. <laughs> and it'll be because <laughs> Adam Rue how he played at the <laughs> university level. <laughs> no, it's, how, it's it'll be because his team lost at the university yeah. level. He was able to play for the Leafs sooner. Oh, <laughs> so you just want him coming in like fucking 300 at the hot game. That's he's right. pissed. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because they lost. Adam, I think your point is very valid. Thank I, there's you. There's sky high expectations on him, and I think a lot of people are con Smythe Matthew Nyes right now. It's a little unfair. And we need to temper these expectations on this literal child yes. who has never played NHL hockey, who's going to step in on game 80. And just kind of get acclimatized no, to no, everything. No, like it's not. It's not even the the hockey aspect of it that's important too. Life. It's a dude who's never lived in this city, who's mm-hmm. never been a professional athlete, having to do that, and then all of a sudden playing the biggest market in the sport mm-hmm. and have to perform at a high level. He shows up and it's he's like, ridiculous. "All right, which one's my dorm?" And the team goes, "Oh boy." Don't and don't forget, he hates you. Um, because he didn't want to sign with the Leafs last year. No, he chose yeah. not to play hates for them this year. The he team. hates you, hates the team, hates doesn't understand them. the brand. I think he might hate uh, some fans for being like, Matthew Nice, come back with your shield or on it. I like it. Um, Matthew okay. Nice, lose so we get you sooner. <laughs> no. We wish I, you yeah, ill. Cheer for him. <laughs> yeah, you, you should be cheering for cheer him. Cheer for him. My goodness. Anyway. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Haraney. You may know me from such films as Driven. Uh-huh. Anybody? No? You may not get that one, but you will. Don't ever watch that movie. It's horrible. Okay, seriously, though, I have a brand new Formula One and IndyCar podcast on the SDPN called Nailing the Apex. So I grew up in the sport of auto racing. I raced go-karts as a kid and eventually got to live my dream of becoming a professional racing driver. I raced at one of the highest levels of motorsports that you can get to, and I got to race all over the world and against some of the best that the sport has to offer. Now I work in the media as an F1 and IndyCar insider. I get to use my 30 plus years of experience to break news and to report on the sport that I love. So whether you're new to the paddock or you're a seasoned fan, check us out, Nailing the Apex. We're dropping three episodes every week featuring the biggest stories in racing, special guests from all over the world, and more. So subscribe to Nailing the Apex on your favorite podcast app and catch up on previous episodes now on the SDPN YouTube channel. Thanks for your warm welcome, everyone. I really appreciate it. SDPN fans, you guys are great, and I can't wait to connect with you. So it's lights out, and away we go over to my podcast. So I want to ask you guys a question. Um... There are four players with 140 points in a season in the last 30 years. Name them. With 140 points in a season. Or more. Or more. Connor McDavid. That's right. As of last night. <laughs> Whoa! I did not know he was at 140. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, Isn't that wild? Uh, wow. Mario Lemieux. Lemieux. Mario Lemieux. Uh-huh. Uh, He's the what? first player to ever hit that plateau in the cap era. Yes. Wow. Um, 143 points, 60 goals, 83 assists for Connor McDavid right now. Yager? Uh, Yager. The and fourth one is going to be tough. Oh, okay. Well, how far back are we going? I said within the last 30 years. 30 years. So Gretzky doesn't fit in. Mm-hmm. Mm. By, by the way, Lemieux's last time doing it, 140 or more, was 95, 96. He did it, t- he did it a couple times. He did it a couple times, but the last time he did it was 161 points. In so 95, 96. The, the answer isn't him twice. No. No, no, no. These are just all separate players. All okay, separate okay, players. Okay. I thought it was a trick question. No, so, no, it wasn't. I wouldn't do the like that. Temu Solani? Not Temu Solani. Ah. We, got, we got Yager. Okay, also, Yager. 30 years yeah, ago. Yager did 149 in 95, 96, by 92. the way. No, 93. Idiot. Um, 93. It's a tough one. I wouldn't have got this, but that's obvious. What, what, are the, is it from the 92-93 season? It is. It's not Messier. Nope. I think it might be Gretzky. It's not. Is it Messier? Nope. Is it a defenseman? No. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It could have been. No, it could have been. It could have been. Um, I like that you're thinking creatively, but it, you don't have to be that creative. Well, that's why I said oh. Gretzky. Um, Gretzky had 130 in 93, 94, oh by the way, <laughs> but not 140. <laughs> and it's it's 30 years ago, so it's, this is actually, yeah. 92, 93. I don't know, man. Buffalo Sabres great Pat Lafontaine. Ah. Oh, wow. He had 148, 53 goals, 95 assists. He was wow. shooting 17%. 
That's <laughs> just wild. That's so dumb. Crazy. Pat well, LaFontaine. You had to make your shots count. Uh, that wow. just kind of shows you what kind of company Connor McDavid's in. Oh, oh Messier's yeah. career high is 129. He never reached 140. What up? Bum. Yeah, yeah, stinks. Damn. Although it's still like fourth, I think, or third all, all time in scoring, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Another thing that uh, yeah, that we should nice. talk about, uh, developing story around Scott Howison, who is the CEO and president of the AHL. Scott Howison, by the way, former general manager of Housen. the Columbus Blue Jacket. Okay. Howison. Anyway. Get it right. Uh, he's a, He was former GM of the Columbus Here, Blue Jackets. Name, <laughs> Howson. Get it right. Howison. You can no, only no, say, see, it, since it doesn't friggin' matter. Only say, only say call it with anger. Call him just Scott Scott. <laughs> just call him Scott since you're on a first name basis with him. Scotty. Scotty. Details don't fucking matter. Uh, Scott House. Anyway, Jake, take it away. Is uh, <laughs> CEO and president of the AHL. There are four or five teams that tr- are trying to have him replaced. Now, if you remember, like that's basically Gary Bettman's role, but in the AHL. Um, and it's up to the teams to decide. But here's the thing. Most of the AHL is run by NHL teams and owned by NHL teams. So these four or five teams are some of the only independently owned AHL teams, which narrows down exactly who they are. One of the teams that Toronto works with a lot that's independent in the AHL is... The Chicago, Chicago Steel. That's right. Chicago Independently Wolves. owned. Chicago Wolves, excuse me. Chicago not That's Steel. why I was like the Marlins. They have used the Wolves, oh. though. They have used the Wolves for some things. Yes, they I didn't mean sent Casimir uh, Kaskis to the Chicago Wolves. There you go. Yeah. So uh, apparently NHL Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly is actively involved in trying to sort through what exactly is going on uh, because the NHL obviously wants to have um. Uh. The NHL wants to have control. Wa- control, of course. <laughs> uh. He's on a. Housen is on an expiring contract. Um. And the guy that used to run the AHL before him, David Andrews, was. Um. Uh. You know. I guess there was a lot of support for Housen when David Andrews uh, stepped away. So it's kind of interesting to see. Uh. The NHL teams, I guess, were surprised by this, and uh, I asked around a little bit, and the best I could surmise was they didn't. The, that that I guess. There could it could be that maybe he's too friendly with the NHL and they don't feel like their interests are being supported. And remember, the 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 team owners pay for this guy, mm-hmm. and if he survives this crisis, which is like a basically a crisis of confidence, he knows that openly four or five teams don't want him there. That's a tough job to keep. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Like not just don't want him there, but like lobbied to get him out. Right. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Scott Housen, I we talked about a bunch on the show when he was the GM of the Columbus Blue Jackets and was very bad mm-hmm. at that. He was bad. Yeah, he was um, bad. And then I think he joined the Oilers briefly, also bad at that. And then he went to the AHL. My uh, based on everything I've heard, uh, assumption was everyone was actually pleased with the job. Uh, he was doing um, like you know some of the experimental rules and and stuff like that. So I'm I'm very curious. Well, everyone what, for, who's everyone though? Well, exactly. that's NHL everyone. Who's I'm, talking to the AHL everyone? I'm curious what the what the independent owners don't like about what he's doing. See, what I would if Bill Daly and and Gary Bettman are having a frank conversation with these owners, they're saying, listen, without us, what's your asset worth? Right. Well, yeah, I don't understand how the AHL can survive. Well, that and, and that's the thing, right? It's been like that for generations. You know, the AHL is essentially a feeder development league for the NHL, one of the many. Do you have all the teams? Do you want me to get all the teams? Yeah, well, because I'm yeah. trying to figure out, like, I, I can't imagine a lot of the AHL teams make much money. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Hershey no does, mm-hmm. I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hershey, I assume, is one of them, even though they're the Caps farm team. I believe they're independently owned. Chicago Wolves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blues? No idea. There's a, there's too much to go through on this. There's a lot of teams. There's like 28 teams. So... Uh, you don't know the four? I don't have... I, well, I don't... Because the four have not actually... There's 11 AHL teams that are owned by independent oh, owners. 11. Um, oh, 11. Oh. And there are varying degrees of connectivity to NHL partners. Mm-hmm. Um, Rochester, maybe? Yeah. Um, so it's 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 I don't know. It's a fascinating window into what kind of goes on behind the scenes and how much the NHL actually controls. I just thought it was worth bringing up for that. No, I well because I saw it this morning and like it does kind kind of come out of nowhere. I would like to know what the grievances are. 
Like, okay, they're too buddy-buddy with the NHL. Okay, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like, in what capacity? Well, that's that's sort of yet to come out, right? And I wonder if that even makes it because it's the AHL and, you know, no offense to anybody in the NHL but, or AHL, but the NHL sucks up 99% of the oxygen, right? So it's sort of, if this is the NHL, we'd know already, but we don't. Uh, and the NHL didn't even know. So uh, they're well, just finding out. This This could be a really big opportunity for some reporters you've never heard of. Because, man, when, when I see people who are longtime reporters for certain AHL teams, I'm like, holy fuck, you love this. Yeah. You, because I know you make shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there. I'm sure there are some markets, maybe Hershey's one of them, maybe Chicago's one of them, where it Rochester. pays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it pays. Um, but I know, uh, for the most part, you do it for the love of it. Right. And for your development, right? That's I mean, you did a ton of Marley's work when you were, you know, I don't know up. about a ton. I did some. You did some. Okay. Well, you worked with people that did a ton and went on to great things. Absolutely. Um, Do you want the 11? Sure. Tell us. Uh, These are the 11 AHL teams. This is from Our Hockey uh, on Reddit. Somebody put the list together three years ago. So, hey. Could be out of date. Could be very different. But this is the 11 owners of NHL teams that aren't, or AHL teams that aren't NHL teams. The Boston Bruins, so the Providence Bruins are owned independently. Charlotte Checkers, that's Carolina. Colorado Eagles. Cleveland Monsters, that's Columbus. Rockford Ice Hogs, that's changed now. Chicago Wolves exist. Uh, Grand Rapids Griffins, Springfield Thunderbirds, Milwaukee Admirals, Lehigh uh, Valley Phantoms, Syracuse Crunch, Hershey Bears. Uh, just one little correction there. The Rockford Ice Hogs and Chicago Wolves existed simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. I don't think the Wolves are the Blackhawks farm team. No. No, I don't think they are. I I mean, it makes perfect sense. What? It's like Grand Rapids, Detroit, Toronto, Toronto, Chicago and Chicago. I don't think they've ever been affiliated. Wow. Who's uh, who's the AHL team? Maybe half. Who's Chicago's AHL team? Rockford. I know. Who's Chicago Wolves' NHL affiliate? It was St. Louis. Carolina. That makes sense. Carolina Hurricanes. Get your stuff together. That makes no sense. Well, then who's Charlotte? Uh, Charlotte Checkers. Oh, let me look it up. Because it Panthers. was Charlotte, Florida and that's Carolina. But the, yeah. it's the Florida Panthers. But that actually makes a lot of sense because Charlotte and and Florida, like Miami, Florida, are not that far. Yeah, yeah. but it would make itself. more sense. It would if it was Carolina. Be a lot cheaper. <laughs> Pull, calling guys out, well, be a lot cheaper. And then there's Utica, Vancouver, and we all know there's no flights. <laughs> that is a deep reference. Okay, move. We got to move this on. Because also, I called them. Yeah, Lehigh Valley, right? Yeah. Lehigh Valley. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, the, the other one I want to mention from Darren Dreger, and this is fascinating, is Taylor Hall and Nick Felino of the Bruins. F- uh, Felino's getting healthy. Taylor Hall is healthy. At least that's the report. The problem is the Leafs, or sorry, the Bruins do not have the cap space to activate Hall. So we're three weeks away. What? And the Bruins do not have the cap space to activate Taylor Hall. So do you do a Kucherov? And just sit them until the playoffs. Hundred yeah. percent. Who gives a shit about these games if you're Boston? And this is why you could lose out and, this, be, and still win the President's Trophy. This is why I do not want a cap in the playoffs. People want a cap in the playoffs. Oh, it's a fairness. Okay, so yeah, who Taylor Hall just that? sits out the playoffs. Yeah, who wants that? No just, one wants no. that. Just just nerds, just weird nerds want that. Nobody else wants that. Well, okay, I want fairness. Cap <laughs> is not the cap is not fair. What, what Sports are, are not fair. Wait, yeah, how do they say? I want fairness. The Montreal Canadiens are still salty about the Tampa Bay Lightning and their and the Kucherov situation. Whatever. Well, the Tampa win. Bay Lightning were salty about the Chicago Blackhawks. And and if you're salty, Montreal, listen. Look at your cap space now. Look at your real cap. Oh, when they're in playoff contention as early as next season, they're going to have like 140 million. 100 no, percent. Oh yeah. Yes. Payroll. And they can afford it. Good for them. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason in the world for the Boston Bruins to activate Taylor Hall before the playoffs. None. Why would Why would they ever do that? Please just wait till game one. No, None. I'm sure he wants to play, but uh, they have to rest their guys. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to not try. I so I was watching the last minute of uh, Nashville Boston yesterday. Boston's top line uh, was down two nothing mm-hmm. in the final minute. And then in the final 30 seconds, and then in the final 15 seconds, and... And the final five. And the final five, and they ended Saros' shutout with 0.3 seconds to go. Oh, out. my yeah. God. They, so, that's the most Bruins thing to happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, like, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying you have to. You have to. If you're the no. Bruins brain trust, you have to go no. and go money. No, you don't shut it off. 
Yes, you do. No, no. It's the door is open. Do not close it because you may not get it back open again. Keep going. No, well, I you guess. Can, you can rest those players, but the level of it, if you're going to play those players, you expect a level of intensity. Well, this is what so I'm rest saying. Them. We're, like so healthy scratch them? Yes. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I thought no, you were saying, no, saying, saying, you're saying stop same. trying. I thought no! you were saying the exact same thing. Oh, really? No, yeah. no, no. Saying healthy scratch saying healthy no, scratch them. I'm saying yeah. healthy scratch them, Jesse. Yeah. No, Steve, are you saying over here was saying healthy scratch, scratch. Healthy scratch And Adam, you're saying healthy scratch them? <laughs> I think you guys should I argue more. I misunderstood what he was saying. No, no, keep arguing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, idiots. I thought you were talking about like you got to try less. Like I thought that was what it was. Uh, no. no okay. I would never ask the Bruins to do something they don't know how to do. Uh, 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 <laughs> I read a tweet from, I think it was uh, Liss on, our, on Game Over Winnipeg. And I think Brady said something on game over Winnipeg last night like the um uh the Winnipeg Jets are not good enough to survive both Ehlers being this far down in the lineup and Rick Bonus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and here's here's what uh Calgary here, is going to back right into that playoffs. Here's what Murat Attis had to say about Nikolai Ehlers move down the lineup. Sorry, no, Murat didn't say this. He asked Rick about it and he said I want him skating with the puck. I don't want him changing whatsoever. You're after him every day. Get the puck and skate and get the puck and skate. We didn't skate with it last game. We didn't. And we need to get the puck and skate. We'll see how it goes. But they'll give him some size. to get the puck and skate. And it should create some space for him uh, to give him a little more room with the puck where he should what? Uh, maybe shoot it. He should skate, actually, is and, what he oh, should and say. Skate. Uh, but Sorry. from day one... I was thinking outside the box. We wanted him carrying the puck <laughs> and... Skating. Skating with it. That's right. Uh, that's what we want when he's at his best. In, uh, and then uh, a couple of times the other night, he wasn't moving and he gave the puck away. So we'll try something else. Now, I want to add to this because there's a lot of frustration building in Winnipeg. What seems like a really big missed opportunity. Uh, Jesse, can you play the audio uh, of Rick Bonas talking about the Jets? And this is the second time in two weeks. We're having the head coach call out the team based on its effort levels play it. The inconsistencies of some of our players uh, is hurting us. Um, you know, if some of these guys think they're giving us everything in their tank, they're dreaming. Um, He's so, so mad. We got a lot of guys in there giving us everything they can, and we just need a few more guys to jump on board. It's not over. We're still in eighth spot, and uh, we're going to find out what we're made of over the next little while. He so that's something that you might be missing if you're listening to it, and this is a body language thing. He's doing that lick the inside of your cheek thing that people do when they're so fucking mad. Mm -hmm. He's so fucking mad, and I got to tell you, this Ehlers situation is not good with the Winnipeg Jets because if they don't think this guy is good enough, they're obviously not going to play him on the on the top line. Like we've seen enough of them not doing that that they're that we know they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Ehlers. Had a modify has a modified no trade clause that kicked in this year. Mm -hmm. He has a six million dollar cap hit, and in actual money, he's going to make six point five next year and six point seven five the year after. If they, I'm the Leafs, give me what he's a he's a that guy's a Leaf. But they missed not at that number. They they missed the boat in terms of well using this player properly. That's but they the also, problem. They also missed the boat on getting any kind of value back for this player. So they need to change their mind on Nikolai Ehlers, I think, because they've made up their mind that he's not useful enough for them to put in certain roles, and they can't trade him in a trade that they're going to win. Before this season, Nik Nikolai Ehlers had one, two, three, four, five, six straight 20-goal-plus seasons, and that includes all the shortened seasons. Uh, he had 20 goals in each of them. He several times came within a couple goals of 30. He has 389 points in 517 career games. This guy's a great hockey player. Uh, and, I, and I just wanted... It didn't. It doesn't show it on the screen. I wanted to see what his average ice time was in all those seasons. Oh, it doesn't show it. Sorry. Probably shit all. Yeah. Well, uh, I, it seems that two things are pretty clear. Actually, three. Uh, the Jets are in tough. Uh, this summer, they don't have a choice. There's going to be big changes, and PLD is what is him to Montreal is almost like confirmed at this and, point. And there's another trade scenario where they're boned. Yeah, because he only wants to go to Montreal, and they can't resign him apparently. Well, and if they, they if he just takes his qualifying offer, or, or no 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 sorry if he's offer sheeted, mm -hmm. the Jets sign him, mm -hmm. 
then he can't be traded for a year. And at the end of his one year contract, he goes to free agency. See, to me, unrestricted free agency. Nick I. Ehlers, who's 27 years old, makes too much sense to the Leafs because he's a left winger who scores. Well, he's going to. It, and the Leafs need that. I agree. They so, they so do Timo Meyer. So I don't know why. They but he's, I, yeah, he, Ehlers is six million. If Bunting costs you four, don't you just go, oh, six feels a lot better than four when think, you're getting point a game. I think Hellebuck needs a backup with the initials M.M. To go with the Manitoba Moose. <laughs> oh, I like that. Matt Murray to Winnipeg. Yeah, why not? It would to make be the money work. No, no, one no. For I, one. I, I just, but he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to go to a team that has the money because mm-hmm. he's he's that's in, real dollars. He's in one of those rare situations uh, where he makes big money and the big money is bigger than the actual cap hit. Right. Or just use the fucking guy. Like <laughs> there was a number that stood or just out. Use him. <laughs> use the fucking guy. There was a number that stood out on his. Uh, thing that adam had what was the number so okay he's got nine goals mm-hmm. in 39 games his his also his shooting percentage has regressed from like a career average of about 12 and a half to uh 7.9 he's got 114 shots yeah which last year he had 245 in 242 games 45. he's also been injured he's also been injured but he only played in 62 games right yeah so you double the amount of games played he's at 78 like the dude's not shooting because i assume he's not on the ice yeah yeah it's a big problem he's got 11 penalty minutes on the year his career high in penalty minutes is 38 the most he's taken since uh 1819 is 30 he rarely gets above 20 dude this is an extremely useful player making not terribly unreasonable money and they just won't use him Mm mm-hmm it's been the number one complaint about Jets fans for God knows how long. I know. I know. It's weird. The real easy solution here seems to be simply play the player. One last thing before we go, because I know that we're running out of time here. We'll do the press conference on Friday. Um, at Mayor NHL. Uh, but Alan Walsh actually retweeted this. Apparently, the puck tracking, the live puck tracking that you've seen on certain broadcasts, specifically Kings fans have been uh, annoyed by this. Um, is going away as early as tonight. It sounds like the, the, the LA tail thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, trail. Sounds like LA Brass decided they wanted uh, it only on replays and uh, shoulder programs, as in like you know your your um, your your intermissions and stuff. That's what they call shoulders. Um, and uh, and I guess because it's just annoying during live action. Yeah, I've seen clips where I thought it added. I've seen clips where I thought it. But the took, key is took away. The, the key is clips, right? You see it in a replay, it, it adds. What's it doing during a live game when you're watching and it's your team? I could see that getting annoying. There, well, there's I, a lot of technology that is available and is useful and is neat um, that we just don't know how to use yet. Yes. Like like the, the player tracking technology where we can show the player's name. I, I think there's a place for that. But the place isn't over every player on the power play the entire power play get that shit off of the screen yeah. that's yeah. so distracting get it out of here i, I also but think it could be useful i also don't know if you need it i really don't know if you need that specifically i don't know if you need yeah. that that's what the numbers are for i guess that's what the numbers yeah, but are for. Th- there are situations where you can't see the numbers agreed yeah i know it just feels gimmicky part of the here's the thing when there's a scramble around the net and the puck goes in isn't part of the fun who scored that and then you Who see, got it? and then you see, like you see the one player who's celebrating harder than the rest of them. You're like, oh, it must have been him. Well, and also, <laughs> like it's a puck, not a snitch. Yeah. There, there's no, there's no uh, like flesh you memory mean like Harry for Potter the, snitch, right? the Harry yeah. Potter golden snitch. Yes. Like there's there, how do, you, yeah, you're gonna have to watch the replay a bunch of times and guess like the rest of us. There's the, just not a lot that's wrong with hockey broadcasts. Like I think we've gotten to a good point where it's pretty good. And oh, like, they're great. I don't think they're all this tinkering, like adding stuff. I know it's you always got to try and innovate in in TV, especially. Um, you always got to come up with new concepts and that sort of stuff. A lot of people justifying their jobs. Um, but I feel like we're at a very good place with hockey broadcasts. I don't know why we need to edit I, so much. I think it's a lot of the Jeff Goldblum Jurassic Park stuff. We we spent all this time asking if we could. And never asking if we should. I think you're so, absolutely right on that. Yeah. And bang on the money. Well, th- this is something I learned about in in broadcasting school. Mm-hmm. Um, when there was one sports class and not a sports program, Maddie, jealous. 
very jealous. But they talked about um, there was briefly a um, a change in the style of broadcasting where it there were a ton of transitions. Right. Like every time the puck moved into a certain place. All right, ready, camera one, take. And it was very fast and it was inside the truck. You felt like a rock star. You're like, holy shit, I'm really making this work. It's very cool to be in in one of those control rooms. It's extremely cool. And but then you watch the actual product and you're like, this is it's too, too much. much. Yeah. And the feedback was it was too much. So they went back. Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't have a problem with trying things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I think there's too much where uh, something is tried once and people go bullshit. Fucking hate it forever. Oh yeah. Like yeah. yeah I told yeah, like I told you that. I told you the board ads are not going away and they're better now than they were at the beginning of the year. You know it's funny. But oh you, yeah. Sorry. Another thing that I saw in the last minute of the Bruins uh, Preds game, tell me, is it looked like the lights went off in the arena. Oh no! But they kept playing the game like nothing was wrong. So what I realized after a few seconds is there's nothing wrong with the lights. It's just that everything was dark except for the board ads. Oh, that's great! So at least they got the sponsors in there. They were trying to figure something out. Maddie, did you see this? No, no, she no. didn't see this. this. Sorry, you were nodding your head. I'm like, oh, she saw it. <laughs> no, it's, was like, it, was, it was She's upset. It was bright um, like it should be, but the rest of the play was dark. Like the, uh-huh. the lights were off. Well, they didn't. They, they, that's white balance, right? They didn't white balance the camera. I don't know what it was, but with the board ads, I'm like, holy fuck. I don't think it's getting better, to be honest. It's certainly more seamless than it was. Certainly it is. I don't know. You got to watch more broadcasts. Yeah. I watch. What do you think I watch? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not saying, uh, like, I think I do. Th- I barely ever notice it on the Leafs broadcast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Other, you mean you, you yeah, watch yeah, the out of town games. It's a little. Like, okay. I, was watching, yeah. okay. I was watching Tampa Fair. Boston on Saturday because I had big fantasy hockey implications on that one. <laughs> so I was, I was dialed in on that game. And That's I why watched, I was watching Boston Nashville. I watched uh, washed up Tampa Bay lose. And uh, the board ads weren't the best, you know. <laughs> like there's there's still the occasional you lose the players when they're all having a board battle behind the net, and I think that kind of stuff's unacceptable. Like let's figure those kings out. Let's get that going. Well, and like it's game. The Leafs are heading into game seventy four mm-hmm. tonight, which means most of the league is in the seventies. Like so, I talked about hey, give it a chance to fail or give it a chance to succeed. Mm-hmm. We're very deep into this. It's season. like what's seventy times thirty-two? That's how many games you've had. That's how many trial runs we've had to figure this out. No. To perfect really, this technology, to get this right. guys. And it's not there. The only reason that the player tracking stuff's going to stick around is because they're going to be able to sell it. Well, that's yeah. the only reason to yeah. develop it. No, the, technology. the the player tracking is. I think. I think those little graphics that they have with the players. And the um, like, they'll give you the percentage that this player is going to win this face off right now, and they'll give that in like eight seconds. You know, and they'll, it's brought to you by uh, Sports Interaction. You know, like that stuff. That stuff's pretty cool and pretty innovative. Just knowing um, how fast the puck went in that shot, like mm-hmm. those little things. How I fast like somebody was skating up the ice. You know, how fast like David that. entered the zone. All that little stuff is great, and I like those little flashes on the screen. That's more like reminds me more video game style. It gives you more just graphics and. Um, I'm talking like the broadcast standpoint of the actual program. I think we've, we've gone to a good place. Yeah. Let's not, let's not mess with the broadcast. Those little stats, though. Those stats are cool. One thing I'd like to see is the score bug, like top middle of the screen, and the stats come out to either side. No. I, I'd like to see it tried. I'm a top left score bug guy. You're to- okay, so it's top left, <laughs> and then the stats come out to the right, to the but right the score side. bug or, never or goes un- away. Or underneath. Yeah, don't don't eliminate the score bug. You need no, to... no, 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 definitely yeah, don't. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. definitely don't. No, no it's the one thing you can't well. eliminate. Yeah. That and the <laughs> no, that and the players. I mean, like sometimes we'll do the flashes where you get the stuff on top of the score bug. That's no, I, I hate that. Yeah, you hate that. I, so, I hate that. It's yeah. it's and it's to give you a cool stat, mm-hmm. but do not give it to me at the cost of the score bug. Yeah, mm-hmm. I will always out. choose the score bug. Pop it out or <laughs> pop it down. Yeah, every no, time. Ch- yeah, why they ever take that down? I'm yeah, for sure. Fuck Ed McGillicuddy took an eighty-eight point six mile an hour slap shot. What's the score? Figure it out. <laughs> Google it. Like, no, I hate that. I hate that. All right. Well, listen, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, and you know what? I guess it's it's time to give. Thank you so much for hanging out. Is it time to give? Um, Jesse, can what? you just for the next uh, episode do this better, please? No. <laughs> don't you? Th- uh, I feel like he could be doing a better job, don't you? Compliment section. Oh, Adam. Compliment he section. He can't. He's not good. No. Not good. 
Wow. I can't. I'm sorry. This yeah. was actually a no. two hour intervention. <laughs> <laughs> we needed like to prove to you how bad you guys, this is. You guys just don't know how to end the show because there's no oh, music playing. Boo. Yeah. Why, yeah. Be you know why? why is there no music playing, Jesse? Why is maybe, there no music playing, Jesse? If you, were, producer, if you were more talented at hosting, oh, Adam, oh. maybe you could end a show. Here, right. wait. Here, wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this man's whole career. Producer, more like amateur producer. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Woo. Hell yeah. Got him. Got him. Get produce. <laughs> Got his ass. Got him. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Wanna bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.